another episode of Take Charge. Today we have a front seat to talk with a national treasure, Henry M. Robert III. His grandfather created Robert's Rules of Order that many of us use today. So sit back and listen to a fascinating walk through history with Henry M. Robert III. I am, uh, again, Alfred Robinson, the Associate Dean for um, Trial Advocacy and the Co-Director of the Litigation Program at the George Washington University Law School. We are delighted to co-sponsor this conversation uh, with uh, the uh, National Association of Parliamentarians and the Supreme Court Historical Society. It is my pleasure to introduce Dean Morant. Dean Blake Dean Morant is the Dean and the Robert Kramer Research Professor of Law at the George Washington University School of Law. He celebrated his one year anniversary, one, as our Dean two days ago on September 1st, 2015. Can we just give him a hand for the year?
And indeed, his grandson who is with us today, Henry M. Robert III, carries on this fine tradition as one of the editors of Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a pleasure for me to welcome you here for this suspicious occasion. And very often, people look at lawyers and they say, they have a certain way of dealing in business, but I want you to know that being a lawyer is a historic and honored profession where you're not only called to represent your clients, but you're also called to be true leaders. That's why the synergy between what you're doing now and what Robert's Rules of Order gives is such a salient part of being leaders. And I am indeed honored to have you here to be part of this legacy. So enjoy the remainder, the remainder of your meeting. Thank you so much for gracing us. Thank you for inspiring me as I inspire law students to understand what true leadership means and that having a knowledge of how to conduct meetings is a salient part of being a very good lawyer and a very good professional. Enjoy the remainder of your meeting.
invited to stay one year at West Point for, uh, for, as an instructor, wow. and then he was sent to the Northwest. When he um, he was born in South Carolina, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, when the Civil War broke out, he. Um, He had his uh, struggle to decide which uh, which side of the, of the north or the south he would go on, and he uh, mm -hmm. came back across the continent all the way over. He couldn't make up his mind, mm -hmm. and he had his night of walking the floor all night, just like Robert E. Lee. Wow. But his decision was different. Uh, he, uh, his reasoning is recorded. Uh, walking the floor in the room in the old Fifth Avenue Hotel in New York City, which I believe was uh, located at the northwest corner of Madison Square in New York City. Mm -hmm. and he, he was just 23 years old. Wow. Well, now let's see. I've got to make a decision in Washington. I have to go with one. When I get there, I have to go with one side or the other. Ooh. Wow. But there's several, several elements to the question. Yes. First, first question is, do I owe my allegiance to the uh, primary allegiance to the federal union mm -hmm. <clears throat> or to the state of South Carolina. Right. Answer the state of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Next question. It is, my, is it my duty to follow the present leadership of the state of South Carolina? Mm -hmm or to make my own judgment as to what is the best interest of the, South, uh, of the state of South Carolina and act accordingly. Okay. And sir, walking the floor for a while, it's my duty to follow what I think is the best, the best interest of the state of South Carolina. <laughs> Next question. Does the state of South Carolina have the right to secede from the Union? Yes, it does. Next, fourth, last question. Is it in the best interest of the state of South Carolina to secede from the Union? Mm. No. If the state of South Carolina secedes from secede from the Union and the other states could do the same thing. They could uh, inform the Confederacy. They could later quarrel among themselves and secede from the Confederacy and the Confederacy could break up and uh, half the country, a major portion, would be back to the same uh, square one that the country was under the Articles of Confederation Ooh. before the U.S. Constitution was adopted. So he would uh, stay with the Union, go with the Union. Hmm. And he went to Washington, walked in the War Department. There was a desk set up right inside the main entrance. Yes where there was a young officer there of his acquaintance. I mm -hmm. said, well, here's what you want, Rob. Regret that he handed him a printed resignation form. He says, all you have to do is put your son. Excuse me. All you have to do is put your uh, name at the top and mm -hmm. sign at the bottom. He mm -hmm. mm -hmm. says, no, I come to report for assignment to duty. Oh. And the, the young officer at the desk was 
astounded and says, oh, what, no, you know, this is what you want, all your classmates are signing this. <coughs> I beg your pardon. Uh, so we went with the union, and uh, all through his life, he proudly wore a button that he belonged to the loyal order, to the military order of the loyal legion of those officers who had saved the war. I, I don't know about all of you, but that gave me chills. How about you? Hmm? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that gives me chills. And it gave all of us chills. Because you imagine 23 years old walking here and making this monumental decision, and he made that decision. Oh, would you please continue, Mr. Robert? Well, so my next one is that. Well, look, I got a lot of questions. So, what did he do with the Union? <coughs> what was his role there at, at the Union Army? It was assigned, it was in the Corps of Engineers, of course. Ah. And he was assigned to construction of defenses in of Washington. But when he had gone to oh dear, when he had gone to the northwest mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, a year after he graduated, graduated from West Point, he um, going across Panama mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the railroad, he contracted uh, virulent malaria. And it dogged him for 10 years at least. Wow. So we found the duty of the defenses of Washington too strenuous. Okay. And then he was sent to uh, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. But that was still leaving with us. So we wound up in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Ah. And that, that is where he had the.